welcome to another episode of Cyber Secrets. We're going to talk about how you can build your own web application hacking lab. One of the easiest ways to set this up is using virtualization. Oracle's VirtualBox is a great way to start because it can run on almost any platform and is free. A lot of the pre-built capture the flags from places like volnhub.com are already configured to install in VirtualBox with little to no configuration. Once the virtual machine is set up, you're pretty much good to go. Some of these web application hacking labs do require a bit of setup. For example, there's one called WebGoat. And WebGoat is a project from OWASP. And it's actually a very vulnerable web application designed to teach about some of the common vulnerabilities found in some of the websites. They did add some uh, options for Docker, for example. So you can install it normally, or if you do install Docker, it just makes things a lot easier to set up. But this is a great uh, place to start off with. Uh, test things like Burp Suite, uh, Paros, you have the open, so OWASP Zap Proxy or Z Proxy. Uh, definitely a good one to play with. There's another one from OWASP called the OWASPs broken web application project you can download it they do have the source code or sorry source forge um, files you can download uh, this is going to be an ova i believe so go into version 1.2 yep ova so this should again start up real easy within uh, your good old uh, um, virtual box there's also damn vulnerable web application dvwa this is the main website, dvwa.co.uk, but I like Volnhub. There's a pre-built one for Volnhub, and it points to the ISO on um, the site itself here, or you can go through their mirror. But uh, a nice thing about Volnhub is there's quite a few different uh, vulnerable virtual machines out there, and a lot of them do have vulnerable web applications. One thing is there are uh, quite a few crossovers for example, you have Metasploitable 2, which is a great uh, image to start practicing uh, reconnaissance and network attacks. That also has DVWA. It has uh, um, several others, like the TWiki, um, PHP My Admin, uh, ones that you can basically attack and compromise. They're purposely built to be vulnerable. But these individually are set up to, again, focus on what you're learning, what you're uh, trying to accomplish. So with that being said, get a ton of stuff out there, real easy to set up. Um, and let's go ahead and start up a, a Wasp broken web application. As you can see, I've already downloaded it. And since it is in an OVA format, I'm just gonna double left click on it. And what it's done is now it's starting to ask me what I wanna uh, set it up with. So I'm going to keep most everything um, right up here. I'm going to give it a little bit more RAM just in case, because I do have a lot to spare. So 2048. As far as the network adapters, this is where you'd want to just make sure that it's going to be on the right network that you need it on before you start it at all. But everything looks pretty straightforward. One thing I will do, though, as far as the, uh, the base folder, I'm going to change this folder to of a D drive, just to make sure I have enough space. So this right here is about a two and a half gig OVA file. And that usually it comes down with some uh, uh, compression. So once the VMDK or the uh, VDI files are actually uh, pulled out, it might take a little bit more space on the disk, but they're usually not too much. Most of these instances I have seen, they're usually about a two to one or three to one ratio. So it's not real large, but it does save a little bit of space. So this does take a little bit of time. This one's actually quicker than a, a lot of others I've dealt with. But this is pulling out the VMDK file. And the VMDK is gonna be the disk. That's the virtualization disk. You now see it's done. This is the new virtual machine. You can name it whatever you want at this point. I'm just going to go into settings real quick and name it 
broken web app. So I can keep it straight on my side. The other thing just wanted to double check and make sure of, go to the network. So this is gonna be used in NAT. I just wanna make sure that it's gonna be on the same network as let's say my Kali system. So on Kali here, go to settings, network. This is NAT network. So I'll make a quick change. Because if they're not on the same logical network, they're not going to be able to talk to each other. And this one should be on a 10.0.2 network. And then at this point, just go and start it. So sometimes it's as easy as that to start uh, propagating your pen testing lab. So I just want to verify, make sure this starts. And as it's going, I'm going to set up another virtual machine, and that's the DVWA. This one, though, is going to be in an ISO. So I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to add a new virtual machine, DVWA. This one also put as a, uh, a Linux system, Ubuntu. This one I believe is a 32-bit OS. You know, give it a little bit more memory. Uh, and I'm gonna not add a hard drive right now because I just want to boot up off the ISO. If I wanted to install off the ISO, I would definitely create a hard drive for it. But again here, just make sure it's on my D drive, DVWA, and create. Now I want to go into the settings and under storage, we have this nice little CD tray here. Go ahead and click on this portion. Now it's going to ask me where I want to choose the, uh, the drive. So I'm going to choose a file. DVWA. And now when it boots up, it should go directly onto the uh, that ISO file. So here I'm going to make sure it's also on NAT or NAT network. So it's the same network as my Kali. Then I'm going to start this one as well. So again, if it's the first time you're setting these systems up, sometimes they may take a while. If they shut down and they're not cleanly shut down, sometimes they take a while. As we can see in the uh, broken web application, it was cleaning up some files, but it looks like it's looking okay. It's starting uh, the Postgres web or the database server. Move this to the side a little bit. Can do a live boot on DVWA. So at this point, we know that it's HTTP. 10.0.2.6 and we'll be able to test that here in a second and this one does not give the IP address but we can identify that with some recon so doing a quick push with Kali just need to log into Kali Move it over. I usually use a tool called Net Discover. If I don't know what the IP address range is, and then it's gonna listen for MAC calls. So basically ARP, MAC address, IP address combos. In here I do see a 2.3 and eventually a 2.6 should be coming up as well. But since we know the network range, I'm gonna do uh, just a quick uh, sweep on this. So let's do an aggressive scan. I just wanna see what's on here. So dash p dash for all ports, um, VV for very verbose, and then 10.2, or 
2.0 slash stu24 then enter so right now we do see a 6 is open and a 2.2 is open So as we mentioned before, they're going to start propagating with uh, NetDiscover. I'll just go ahead and close out here. Just do a quick if config. My system is going to be 10.0.2.15. So that is good. Now I'm going to try to connect to each one of these systems just to make sure that I can get access. So. With that said here, it's going to be 10.0.2. What's it? 6. And it definitely helps out if you uh, spell it correctly. I just got into OWASP um, Broken Web Application. So again, we have 2.2, 2.6. I'm going to do a quick just for port 80. So that did a ping sweep. Verified some systems that are open. Okay, we have the 2.6 open. We also have 2.7. And it looks like that is actually running a web server. So, there we go. So at this point, we're able to verify both broken web application and able to verify the damn vulnerable web application. So at this point, now you get to start playing with your lab.